Once upon a winter night, Galileo Galilei, this guy here, decided it was time to get to know one of the brightest dots in the night sky. This dot here, it is impossible to miss it. He pointed his telescope toward Jupiter and changed the way we perceive the universe. He saw Jupiter as no one had seen it before him, and he saw something unexpected, small dots following it. He wasn't imagining it. The dots were really there. Galileo had discovered four moons around Jupiter and named them the Medici planets in honor of then great Tuscan Duke Cosimo II. The Duke must have really cashed it out on Patreon. By now, it is obvious that the bodies in the night sky do not rotate solely around the Terra, but have their own followers rotating around them. In a nutshell, Aristotle failed big time. The geocentrists are all bonkers, and someday I will prove it to everyone. Subscribe to this channel because you do not want to miss it. Like and comment. Don't be warned, all geocentrist comments will be deleted. Unbeknownst to Galileo, and at the same time, moons of Jupiter were noticed by Simon Marius, an astronomer from Germany. He named them after Zeus's sweethearts from Greek mythology, Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. Galileo wasn't too happy about it. Simon! He refused to call them by the names his sworn enemy, Marius, gave them, and he logged them down in his notes solely by numbers, from the closest to Jupiter to the farthest from it. That really showed Marius. Today, we know those four moons by the names Marius gave them, and as a collective, we call them the Galilean satellites. Compromise is a wonderful thing we continue observing the king of planets using increasingly sophisticated instruments. And with a closer look, we discover another 76 small moons. As is so often the case, yesterday's bright dot now becomes a dynamic world completely different from our own. It is a gas giant wrapped in turbulent atmosphere and forceful storms. It so happens that one of the storms that we have observed for centuries now, we creatively named the Great Red Spot because it is great and red and spot-like. Here, the wind speed reaches 650 kilometers per hour. That is 350 knots for our intrepid sailors. At this moment, its diameter is larger than our whole planet, which makes it hard to miss even with a smaller telescope. Go on, go on, feel free. I'm not going anywhere. The whole thing makes sense only if you own a telescope. And if it's currently nighttime where you live, and if Jupiter is even visible. I haven't really thought this through. Luckily, thanks to film editing magic, we can cut any bad idea out. If we go from the optical part of the spectrum to the radio part, we will hear Jupiter sing as a result of its forceful magnetic field. La, 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 la. What we hear la, la, la. is actually the energy released by the particles caught in its extensive magnetosphere. It may sound pretty, but it is also dangerous, both for people and for our robot ambassadors. The first spacecraft to traverse Jupiter is Pioneer 10, which, among other things, gathers information on the radiation in Jupiter's magnetosphere. This provides us insight on how to better protect the instruments on future spacecrafts. Galileo is the first spacecraft to enter the orbit for a longer visit to the King of Planets. After numerous pushbacks and technical problems, Galileo's scientific adventure finally begins on the 8th of December, 1995. For the next eight years, Galileo transmits dozens of gigabytes of valuable data and imagery of Jupiter and its satellites back to Earth. In the age of terabytes and petabytes, gigabytes sound so modest. Those are the gigabytes streaming to us from a distance that are measured in hundreds of millions of kilometers. 
Nowadays, you maybe have an optical connection at home that runs at a few hundreds of megabits per second, but Galileo communicated with Earth at a speed of 1,000 bits per second. That is 0.001 megabits per second. Imagine YouTube loading at that speed. Jupiter may be dramatic and photogenic, but during our visits, its satellites were surely fighting for our attention. Io, the closest of the Galilean satellites to Jupiter, is an active volcanic world somewhat bigger than our moon. Io's volcanic activity is initiated by friction caused by the gravitational pull between Jupiter on one side and the Galilean satellites on the other. At first, Europa seems like a dreamy snowball, but her frozen shell is full of faults that point to the existence of a deep ocean of liquid water underneath the sleepy exterior. The ocean in which we could, perhaps, experience our first contact with extraterrestrial life. Okay, maybe not exactly like that. More like this. Ganymede is the only moon in the solar system that we know of having a magnetic field, and the secrets hiding under Callisto's numerous craters will be discovered in our future missions. It wasn't like we were only taking pictures around Jupiter. Galileo had taken a friend on this journey, the friend that was met with an ill-fated destiny. Five months before meeting Jupiter, the atmospheric probe separates itself from Galileo the remaining 82 million kilometers, it will travel alone. Its path will take it straight into the clouds of the gas giant. The probe wakes up around 350,000 kilometers from Jupiter's clouds. Six hours later, it touches the atmosphere at a speed of 48 kilometers per second. The slowing down lasts 58 seconds. The temperature on the heat shield goes above 16,000 degrees Celsius. The braking parachute lowers the speed down to 120 meters per second, and the opening of the main chute lowers that speed down to 27 meters per second. For an hour, from that very spot, the probe sends us invaluable data about the composition of Jupiter's atmosphere. It measures the temperature, records lightning, and compares the level of the heat energy that the planet gets from the sun with the one that radiates from its core. At the depth of 180 kilometers, the temperature of 150 degrees Celsius and the pressure of 23,000 hectopascals, the radio transmitter overheats. And what comes next is silence. For the next several hours, as the silenced probe dives deeper, the heat and the pressure still grow and the probe melts and evaporates thus becoming a part of the planet itself. Almost eight years later, the Galileo spacecraft also finishes its mission among the clouds of Jupiter. This wasn't our last visit to the King of Planets. That is a whole other story to be told. <laughs>